this on uh, Facebook, right? Right, right, yeah, right, Jeremy. Um, so we're Facebook. we're we're live. So hello, hello everybody, and welcome to Pixel Stabbers. This is our first time we're live on YouTube at youtubecom stabbers and we're live on Amazon Live. So wherever you're checking us out, thank you for tuning in today. We're gonna talk about Jeremy Chan today. He's a wedding photographer. He's been shooting for weddings. He's been shooting weddings for like 15 years. He's got a lot of experience. He shoots amazing pictures. We're gonna see some of the pictures today. Uh, but what he wants to share today is his visions for how he takes the pictures and how he sets up his lighting for the pictures. And most importantly, what lights he uses for these photos. And right now down in the description below, you can see we're talking about the Gikona flash, which are something that are relatively new. And what they offer is a amazing power that's compact and very affordable so oh, like with Keep yes talking. oh yeah so he's gonna get the flash out so we can see it there but uh, yeah <laughs> let's take a look at the flash jeremy so um yeah these flashes cool. are amazing yeah yeah take it out show us show us show us the flash well while he's showing that let me show you guys uh Gikoda's website Gikoda has an amazing website check it out they got some beautiful pictures there um, they, they got, they got uh, what they got here. They got tripods, off-camera flash, and LED lights. Today we're talking about their off-camera flashes here. And if you look, uh, they actually were uh, presenting at WPPI. And there's Jeremy Chan. He's one of the um, speakers at the booth. But today you get Jeremy Chan right here up front in person, live streaming to you guys. If you have any questions, uh, go to our YouTube channel and put the comments there. We can get your comments there. And also, if you are on Amazon Live, feel free to ask us questions there as well. So Jeremy, do you have the flash on hand? Can you show us what the flash yeah. looks like? Ooh, cool, let's zoom in on Jeremy. Look at that. So this is the GT200 by Kikoto. Uh, nice. It's compact. Yes, right? looks good, looks good. There we go, on top, just yep. like this. Very nice. Oh man, I love how the battery sits right inside. You, you it just fits so yeah. flushly. Yes, and it's like yeah. I love this battery right. because yeah, because I use because you know when I normally shoot weddings, I use the speed lights. Uh, if I can pull up the speed light here, yeah, let me grab you a speed light. So here's my speed light. I don't have any batteries in it, but. When I need to replace a battery, it's four batteries. So you know when you're shooting a wedding, you gotta take out these four batteries, find a place to put it, like on a table, get new four four new batteries from my pouch, load it up, put it in here, and I need to change battery like three times in the wedding day. It's a pain. But over there, the Gikodo GT two hundred. I mean, this battery could probably last you like two few weddings. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> And what I love about it is if, if you need it to, you can just have another battery and you swap it out because it's one piece, boom, you're done. You don't have to deal with four batteries, this. right? Wait, wait, wait. This is, the, you know why they call it GT200? Let me guess, 200 watts? Yeah. <laughs> you could go up, overpower some of this. Yes, that, that is a very strong size flash. Yours too. Yeah, it is the same size, but this one, this one, because this, this flash is like this small, right? A, a majority of it is with the battery and the control unit. And this is old technology. This form factor has been around for like 10 years now. The form that, factor that, you have. That, the one you have is right. for a mount on top of the camera, right? Yes, exactly. For like yeah, and you can and mount what, that on a light stand or you can hold it too, right? It's got the nice grip so you can handheld it. It's a cool thing. Yes. Look at that part over uh, Yep, yeah, that looks so cool. Like, exactly. And then I kind of lost the piece, but then what? If on the bottom here, yeah. suppose the, this here is you mount onto um, the light stands. Yes. And there's a screw there. And the screw actually go in there, but last time I went through it, I lost it. So, <laughs> right, so they right. Will replace it for me. So, yes. will you now, please, I need the screw back. I really do. <laughs> yeah, and Gikodo has great customer service. Like, if you ever like have a problem where like maybe you're missing a bolt or a screw like that, go give them an email on their customer service, or if you're buying from Amazon with the link below, yeah. just reach out to them in customer service. They are great at customer service. Um, I, I, Gikodo, hands down, awesome customer service, great yeah, product, point. high quality, good price. We love their stuff. Obviously, so if you if you look at my screen here, you can see uh, the Gikodo has two two options on Amazon, right? They have the GT two hundred with the kit that comes with the softbox here, and this mm -hmm. is a little bit pricier. Uh, this comes in at 
three ninety nine, but it has everything like, you need. Yeah, to... everything. Yeah, That's your exactly. full lighting system there. Like, yeah, it comes perfect. to the light stand. The light stand is pretty stiff. It's a yes. good light stand. It's not those like we want a cheap one. This is a really good one. Yes. You yes. know, normally when they when they come with the kit, they give you something like kind of not good quality, mm -hmm. but not them. They give you good stuff. This is yes. all good stuff. Yeah, but the only one catch is that you also need to buy a trigger with this, right? Yeah. So you can go look for usually purchase with, right? And uh, find the trigger for this one. Or you can just search for a Gikoto flash trigger. Uh, let's see mm -hmm. if we can find it real quick. Gikoto flash trigger, right? And then you buy the right trigger for either whether it's your Nikon. Around 40 bucks. Yeah, yeah so the, it's right here. The second one. Yeah. yeah. So we actually should add this to the link, uh, but we don't have it. So if you need to look for a Gikono uh, flash trigger and make sure you pick it for your can your camera, whether it's Canon yeah. or Nikon. And yeah, see this one's for Canon. I think it's with the C, and this one is for N. It's for Nikon, and you can see up here too. And then I think the last one. Oh, they even have it for Sony. I didn't realize that. Yeah. S yeah. So you have all three options there. So pretty cool. Forty bucks for this. And then uh, again, we can go back to the GT uh, 200. 200 kit that comes with the Speedlight. Uh, sorry, the, the Speedlight GT 200 and the softbox here. Softbox. Or if you don't need the softbox, you can buy it by yourself here. And that mm -hmm. one comes around $279. And also some of the accessories are pretty cool because they're magnetic. So you just pop on, really mm -hmm. cool stuff. But They got the gels here. Yeah. But before we start talking about like all the equipment and the prices, let's actually hear what Jeremy has to say in terms of what inspires him to take these pictures and how he sets up the lights to take these pictures. And then we'll, in that presentation, we'll talk about how he uses specifically the GT200. Right, Jeremy? Yep. All right. So I believe you... <laughs> what was that? full control you have my powerpoint yeah i believe you sent yeah, me the powerpoint it. and um I, I'll, I'll be your um your mouse right so let me know when you yep. want me to go to the next slide all right so what do we okay. have here uh it's a cover page so let's move on to the next page <laughs> well there's a couple of things but like i see like skyrim logo ex photographers you want to talk about uh, any of this uh well i'm a ambassador for okay all of this Okay, <laughs> I'm a I'm a Skynom software ambassador. Okay. Uh, I'm also a photographer for G Film mm -hmm. as well. I'm sponsored by Microsoft. Awesome, awesome, so, cool. That's well, we, and that's my cool logo right there, Jeremy. Jeremy, awesome, awesome. Jeremy. All right. Without further ado, let's go to your first slide. Look at that. Oh, again, it's about me again. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I should you Jeremy, this. it's <laughs> all always this. about you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let me read this. So you got you're a San Francisco-based wedding photographer and portrait photographer. Uh, you got the winner award-winning WPPI 2011 Image of the Year award. Congratulations! Well yeah, done. I'll show you that image later. I have yeah. that on the slides. I would love to see that. You seven times first place winner in WPPI photography competition. Uh, fantastic and. Your retouching work has won over 70 international awards. Fantastic. Awesome. Anything else you want to say about this slide, Jeremy? No, uh, I'm pretty embarrassed about it already, so just move <laughs> Oh, you're embarrassed about it? Should we also say that he's been shooting weddings for 15 years, and he shoots international weddings, and he shoots amazing environmental portraits and wedding and spontaneous moments. He captures the best pictures. All right, so let's go to the next slide. Okay, so, next slide. Yep. So, um, so this is one thing that, I don't know, I don't know if someone held it, I made it up, I forgot, I think I made it up. <laughs> so the world is your backdrop. Yes. The reason is that um, most of wedding photographers start locally. Yes. And me too. But then um, I want to learn more, so I enjoy international workshop by my mentor, Scott mm -hmm. Robert Lynn, back now, uh, like I think like 10, 12, 13 years ago, I forgot. Mm -hmm. Um, so th from that point on, I realized photography can do more for as a photographer, as I could actually go places with it, with yes. photography, it will yes. bring me places, like it bring me to Paris. So this is what I come up with. The world is your backdrop. And it, and also because one of my specialty is shooting on location internationally. Yeah. I mean, so. like how, how awesome is that? You shooting pictures, which is your hobby, your passion, you love it, mm -hmm. and you're getting paid for it 
because you know you you're, you're providing value to your client you're enjoying these amazing uh, weddings or pre weddings so you have uh, the festivities the fun and excitement and you get to travel right see I want to share one more thing the love for me for photography is not just about taking a picture and all that it's just mm -hmm. I actually love photography because photography give me a lot of things friends and wife <laughs> family uh, well that that's that's personal but one thing they even give you though <laughs> is that before that I mean to be honest give it like 10 15 years ago yeah you won't see me talking like this you don't see me speaking in any kind of inter international conference mm -hmm. I'm so shy I'm mm -hmm. shy and I don't even go out I don't travel really yeah that's me that like 50 years ago <laughs> but because photography it allowed me and it, it somewhat forced me to travel because if someone is going to pay you this much money and tell you hey can you come to Paris and shoot my wedding pictures yes would you say no you get to travel and then you can make the money right so from that only keep training and become more um you know open up open-minded and just make a lot of friends internationally that's that's like a dream I mean normally you don't get that kind of life but because of photography I gain that life yeah. So for, absolutely sure. Love it. So it's it's okay. it's it's got it provides a lot of value to you and it's it's made you who you are today. So fantastic. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Awesome. I I you know you 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 cannot say no to traveling, but I'll, I know myself and a lot of other photographers they don't have the flexibility to travel like you. So you are very privileged to have the opportunity. Well, in the and beginning, get to I don't either because like oh. everybody start part time. Yes. Right. Um, I which at a certain point that I just quit my job and do full time. Oh, that's how you were able to travel. Yeah. Awesome. It, it, it's a gutsy move. You know, my family doesn't like that. You know, come on. You know, I'm Chinese, and then you know your, how your parents. Are. You what? You gonna be what? You be? <laughs> I just supposed to be an engineer, a, a, a lawyer, or a doctor, or something like that, right? Yeah. Well, so, you made a I great choice. Know. So let's let's uh, learn more about your photography, Jeremy. What's on the next slide? Pre-wedding. What's pre-wedding? So pre-wedding for U.S. audience, they probably are kind of not familiar with this term, but uh -huh. in Asia, and Europe, it's pretty popular because mm -hmm. in mostly Asia, I would say mm -hmm. they like to take their wedding picture before wedding day. So they, that's why I call it pre-wedding. Ah. Well, two things about it is one is the culture of some of those culture they are having really intense wedding day. Mm -hmm. There is no way they will have any kind of time for like a bridal sessions or whatnot. Right. So they ha if they want pretty uh, wedding pictures, <laughs> they have to do Yes. And when those clients want their wedding picture, they want it in dream locations such yes. as Paris, Italy, you know, places like that. Yes. So um, that become like a whole new different um, genre of photography all by itself. Very and cool. At some point, I just kind of specialize in that. Yeah, because it's fun. It yeah. give me, it give me options and um, to travel and see all these wonderful places. Yeah, and pre-wedding, like you said, it's not a normal term that we hear in the United States. Uh, mm. Oftentimes, it's used as the the alternative is engagement session here, but that's very different, right? Because engagement no, session, yeah. you're doing a photo session with a couple, but typically more in casual clothes. Uh, whereas pre-wedding, you're actually wearing the pre-wedding outfit. And you're shooting that and before the there wedding. will be makeup artists and hairstylists for yes. us around, like you know, they're a celebrity or something. Yeah, so kind of like it's a cheap photo shoot, right? So people might confuse it as the day of the wedding photo shoot because they're wearing wearing the same wedding outfit as they do on a wedding day. So if you show those pictures, no, on not a wedding really. Day, if you think about it, it makes more sense because yeah. um, in the U.S. wedding or the Western culture, yes. you have the wedding day, and yes. then after the wedding, yeah, I mean, weddings tear down and yes. friends and family go back home. Then your photographer will get you that wedding album, which is ah. telling the story of the wedding day. Yes. But for this, they have a wedding album. It's full of the amazing wedding pictures. Right. Internationally, pays it on the venue for oh, all the guests and family. Yes. Them. Yeah, and it's international, and it's all done. It's ready to go. Very cool. All right, let's check out uh, the next slide here. So actually, you already oh. said this, right? <laughs> So let me read this out just so that we have it. So what is a pre-wedding photo shoot, right? So a pre-wedding photo shoot is more like a, a contour fashion engagement shoot. The couple will be wearing bridal clothing or fashionable clothing. And this photo shoot usually takes place in a few months prior to the wedding day. And in your case, at a very nice 
international location or beautiful location like San Francisco Golden Gate Bridge or some iconic breathtaking venues, right? Cool. Yep. Okay, moving on. Yep. So next slide here. Yeah, we got a lot of slides, so we're gonna move. Yeah. So okay, what, so what this is some of the this? work that I have. This yep. is some of some of my international pre wedding work. Yep. So you see not everybody is wearing a bridal dress, some are not. So but it, they are still fashionable. So that's what that definition means for pre wedding. Yeah, very beautiful. I love all these shots. They look amazing. Oh, I know this one down here in the bottom. That's uh, San Francisco City Hall. Oh yeah, that's City Hall. That's City yeah. Hall. But yes. the rest are like international locations. Beautiful, beautiful mm -hmm. photos. Ooh, it all starts here. Yes. So I talk about this because a lot of people ask me, "How the heck did you start? Like, you know, how?" Right? <laughs> yeah. So, in most cases, you need to put yourself out there. For for me, mm -hmm. um, I put myself out there because back then I just want to learn more how to be better. Mm -hmm. And I joined my still good friend and mm -hmm. my mentor, Scott <laughs> Robert. He has a Paris workshop. So we went yes. and then, um, you know, we stayed a little bit longer. Mm -hmm. And then we were walking around the street in Paris. And if you could go to the next slide, please. Oh, yes, absolutely. And that one day I went into this location and they have a bridal salon there. So we just, you know, being a wedding photographer, we wanted to check out stuff in Paris. Mm -hmm. What, how, how is it like the wedding salons in Paris, right? Uh -huh. And so it happened that, see that lady with the sunglasses? Yep. She was there checking out um, all the bridal dresses. Yes. It's about to get married with this guy, the yep. gym. We become mm -hmm. good friends right now. Mm -hmm. The lady's name is uh, Anna Paula. Mm -hmm. And we just asked, hey, um, do you mind modeling for us? I mean, we are waiting for towers and you know, so one thing need the other, we sat down, have some cafe uh -huh. and then we chit chat a little bit. And then um, two days later we met again and we did the pre-wedding session in Paris. Wow. Very nice. So next slide, please. Yep. Ooh, so photos. this is the session we did. So we sat down with them and say, uh, let's do some vintage stuff. This is Paris, so yeah, and it's an awesome dress. Yes, uh, happy all that. So, we this is all the picture we did. Very uh, nice. This is our. This is my first, very, very first Ooh. international pre wedding. Beautiful, and you shot a lot before then too, right? Like this is this is not this is after you have a lot of experience shooting. Oh yeah 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 yeah. yeah. That, that's a local wedding day. We know about the lighting, po yes. posting all that. But this is the first gig, uh, shooting. Internationally, yeah, that that really drives home a point because it's very difficult to get to the international stage, right? Because people don't really know how to just start shooting internationally. You don't just advertise that I shoot internationally without a portfolio, right? But you kind of yeah. get your way into it, and it's a very but unique you, story. Okay, this is not like your local wedding clients yeah. that you could come to your right. locations and ask, "Hey, have you shot in this venue before?" Because <laughs> most of the clients don't know much about photography or they don't know you at all. Yes. You gotta build trust. Right. So the only thing that they could base on is have you shot this before? Have right. you shot that before? Right. So when you get the location, they kinda give you the comfortable uh um, they trust you, right? Yep. So same thing goes for international. If you if someone wanna book you, have you ever shot in Paris before? Have you ever shot in Italy before? If you haven't they how can they trust you, right? No, of course not. Yeah. So you, you gotta put yourself out there like um, yeah, of course, if you travel to Paris by, by yourself and try to get a model there, a bit of money, investment, mm -hmm. yes. But if not, there is a lot of workshop, which is the international workshop you can join, mm -hmm. and then just take two, three days off and maybe, I mean, doing the workshop, they have models there too. Yes. Just talk to them and then do some more photo shoot there. Then yes. you have your portfolio to That's showcase that you actually do international. Yes, yeah. And that builds the trust, that builds the confidence. And that's how people can get started in international mm -hmm. photography. So let's see what you have in the next slide here. So this is one of the pictures in this session. Mm -hmm. This is raw, just raw, raw. <laughs> but then it has always telling factor there. You see yeah. how those three guys talking and then yeah. the couple is there like, kind of like, you know, talking love. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, you know, yeah. so I, I really fell in love with this image and um, I did some photo shopping. Mm -hmm. And that would be the next slide. <laughs> Ooh, next slide. Ooh, I like this one. So I kind of convert into because the the color is too distracting. So mm -hmm. uh, turn it into sepia, mm -hmm. kind of a film grain 
into there, so like an old Paris type, mm-hmm. and I can do it into the WP Bay photo competition. Ooh. And <gasps> this is the one. Look at that. Wow. I won a award for this. Amazing. And th- was yes, this the but... first time you were in international location, or this this is one of the times you were in international uh, location? This is the first picture I sent in, which okay. is like international. The others were more, more like local stuff. Very nice. Amazing. Like, like 2000. <laughs> Long time ago. But still, it's timeless. It's classy. Congratulations. Yeah, that's the whole, that's the whole point. Uh, this picture, when they judge, because they have like five judges judging mm-hmm. this, it basically created a lot of controversy. Hmm. So I was there when they're judging the picture. They said that I should just crop in and forget those three guys and focus on the subject. Yeah. Now, good thing that they have a lead judge. Okay. <laughs> so every single from the lead judge is the most experienced and most artistic yes. there is. So the other judges basically come come in and give out like their opinion. <laughs> but the lead judge is guiding them. So right. lead judge like saving me. Like basically, he pulled my picture up again and say, and literally, I remember. Every single person, you guys do not know how to look at the picture. Wow! This is not this is live. You see how they they he actually captured Paris live in yes. this picture. How can you say that? How, you can't copy them now. That's the story. Yes. Like man, that's really powerful work to me. Someone defending my work. Heck so, yeah! This, Good job. This picture is like very memorable for me. Beautiful. Let's take a look at the next slide. Oh. Yeah, little did I know that it didn't end there. So next slide. Yes. Ooh. And somehow this image made it become the image of the year for 2011. Wow! Congratulations, image of the year. Well done. Good so job. Actually, I reversed. We did that first, and then we entered. They kind of tried <laughs> to put it down, and the the other judge basically helped me out. So yeah. Anyway, right. so Next this slide. means a lot to me. This is my first international uh-huh. gig. At the same time, mm-hmm. got this award. So like this really sparked my career um, doing the international pre-weddings. Okay, cool. Jeremy, I just want to remind you that we have a lot of slides, but I want you to tell me when you change slide. That way I don't cut you off before you go okay. to the slide. Okay, I'll yep. do that. Yep. So change. Yep, got it. Move on, next. So um, this is a slide that I want to talk about, which is doing international shoot. I shoot from day to night. At nighttime, Ooh. to be honest, you got to use glass. So. Yes. Today we're gonna to talk about flash. Yes. And the flash I use is going away now is this. Which is in the comments down below in the description. You see that's the Gikodo GT two hundred. You can buy it by itself or with the kit. So it's a powerful yeah. flash and it's compact and portable. And he uses compact. that right in this situation to backlight them, right? Yeah, because if you want to um, overpower the sun normally, you have to bring those like really big flash with like cable linked to a really mm-hmm. huge battery, right? Right. Do I mean, I travel. I can't do that. No. Seriously. So this is perfect. This is powerful enough and it's compact. You, yes. If you don't need the handle, you basically put it in the back pocket and walk around. Yes. It's so cool. Yeah. It it literally fits in the back back pocket. I mean, let me let me show you real quick, like this picture right it, here, right? Yeah. Little. It literally fits in your pocket. <laughs> it is a very compact, but it's got all the power you need um, to even shoot against the bright sunlight. So cool. Going back to your presentation here. Okay, next slide, please. All right. So I'm gonna talk about how some of this um, picture were laid. Like for this one, mm-hmm. um, I basically just don't want to overpower the Eiffel Tower, so I use mm-hmm. backlight on this couple. Mm-hmm. Just two back, two of those lights in the back to mm-hmm. create the whip lights for them, and yes. that's it. Because I want a mystery. I don't need to showcase everything they have cause, because it's a moment. Right. And I want to show, okay, they're in Paris dancing. So the whim yes. like to kind of whim them, yeah. can send them up. And then if you look, go back to the last film so we can see the full picture. Yep. Which in a way, in this picture, I want to showcase the Eiffel Tower more than yes. a couple. Yeah. So. But you have just enough interest, uh, like enough um, focus on the, the couple without showing the whole detail, right? It's just, it's just mm-hmm. so pleasing. It's just enough detail. It makes you interested. It makes you curious what they look like, but it doesn't destroy the curiosity with too much light. So I like it. It's a very good amount of lighting on them. If I could do this again, it could probably be better because you don't see the quality. Mm. Um, I'm trying to bring back 
um, whatever is in the front. But then back then I was shooting with like a crop sensor, lower tech crop sensor. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think it's like a D three hundred Nikon Ooh. back then. Fine. So, but I think it's still pretty good. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, it goes. It all goes back to photography is knowing how to use the camera you have. You can take this picture, I'm sure, with a cell phone, and it will be just as good because as long as you well, have the light, yeah, you have to get trigger the light. Yeah, you, <laughs> the light. you got to trigger the light, and then you have to know how to frame it, and you got to get the couple in the expression. You have to make them feel comfortable, and all that is the skills that you add to it. It doesn't matter what camera you use, but yeah, yep. you use an old crop sensor that today you can probably buy that camera for a couple hundred bucks, but you took this amazing picture. Good job. All right. Moving on, next picture. So that's the setup. Um, you see how there's a diffusing umbrella? Yes. So for my international travel gig, I use umbrella because it's easy to open and it's close. It's compact. Yeah. Pack. Yeah. And for this type of thing, you want to be able to move fast. Like in location, you want to close it yes. and just run. Yes. Because we're on the street. We are not supposed to be there. <laughs> so you don't want to be stay there, set up your like free for lighting with different yes. softbox, 48 softbox set up for like 15 minutes and Absolutely then close it for not. 15 minutes. You don't want to do that. Right. You just want to open umbrella, close umbrella. I yeah. mean, it, to be honest, I, to me, I feel like if you're doing outdoor shooting, using an umbrella and compared to a softbox, that, that doesn't make that much difference. There's no wall to bounce your light anyway. Yes, exactly. Yep. Yeah, the only reason so, why you have softbox is to prevent the light from spilling behind it to yeah. ag- hit against the wall and bounce back to get extra lighting that you don't want, right? But if you're outside, that light can spill anywhere and it'll never bounce back, right? So yeah, for outdoors, I also use a translucent umbrella like this. It's fantastic. Yeah. Okay, next, please. Mm-hmm. Wow. Wow. Okay. <laughs> yeah, this is one of those uh, moments that... I got wild too because I never seen the the loop had that kind of wet lighting before. So I'm like, we gotta that capture that. That is amazing. <laughs> so again, this is also using backlight. Do you know why I keep using backlight? It creates curiosity. Well, yes, but at the same time, during those time, uh, mm-hmm. I just start learning off camera flash, so mm-hmm. I'm not too good at it. And back flash is probably the easiest to achieve because it doesn't matter the setting, right? Yeah. <laughs> as long as it fires, it looks good. But, but at it, the same time, um, it kind of created mood too in this case. Yes. You, for this type of photo, you uh, yes, the subject is the couple, but at the same time, do we're talking about shooting in front of the loop? You got to feature the loop. Yeah. So, and with the back lighting right there, basically illuminate them. It mm-hmm. shows their dancing move and with the refreshments, all that. Because oh, one yes. other thing is, there's, for that pose there, I can't put a fun light. Where am I going to put it? In the water? <laughs> well, you can Photoshop it out if you put it in the front, but then that's a lot of Photoshop work. Yeah. And also, I don't want to get wet. Oh, going yeah. In. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's, 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 that's like a whole pond, right? It's probably deep, too. Yeah. Oh, wow. Not I didn't realize that. It is. <laughs> I thought it was reflection because of the rain, but this is actually. Oh, just... no, no. It's oh, a pond. Okay. Oh, nice. Very nice. So, that first thing to do is using a backlight. Mm-hmm. Pretty much. And it, somehow, I don't know, the dress and the wet lighting like, match perfectly. <laughs> it does. Picture. Yeah, the color of the dress just pops out and it, it matches uh, the background too. Love it. Mm-hmm. Okay, next one, please. Mm hmm. So basically, it is a setup. Yep. Do you like my Do you like my lighting diagram? It looks pretty cool, right? Yeah, your lighting that. diagram looks great. <laughs> you just gotta figure out where where to put us so that they can see us as well as your lighting diagram. But keep going. Yeah. Well, that's pretty straightforward. That light, one flash. Yep. And that's it. Simple. I mean, Easy. lighting doesn't have to be complicated. Yes. You just have to know how to compose it. Okay. Next one, please. Yep. Wow. This is another awesome wow shot. Like this is no one. Breathtaking. Again, also, also backlighting because um, yeah. you see how there's a little orangey behind. That's supposing I want to create like a sunset kind of mood using mm-hmm. a gel on the flash, and mm-hmm. um, but then that doesn't work out. It's a little bit too <laughs> orange, but you, I would not have noticed it if you didn't point that out. But at the same time, uh, my goal is like, you know how I want the last picture, they mm-hmm. have this halo kind of grow yes. behind them? 
Yes. But because it's too early and still too bright, so the flash won't able to do that effect. Right. Um, so I did a little doctor up here. It does that. You see that veil flying? Yes. Yeah. It weren't there in the beginning. Photoshop, Photoshop. veil. <laughs> that that adds to it. It makes it makes it interesting because honestly, if it wasn't for the veil, I would have a little bit of a hard time identifying the couple. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Thank you for noticing that. Yeah, absolutely. Because so, um, it, it, it's it's so it's so grand. There's so much to look at here. Yeah, so I think I have a lighting diagram next. Let's take a look at the lighting diagram. Uh-huh. So yeah. So I have a system down there. You see how that little black marsh paint? This one? Oh, okay, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's just supposed to like kind of flapping the veil so uh. that it'll fly, but it never happened and it happened, it just doesn't look good. So that veil is actually there in another picture, but oh. they, that's good. It's just stop well, doing Photoshop it. magic. Yeah. So that's pretty it. Next one, please. Mm -hmm. Wow. Ooh. I don't know why I like this so much because you see those a little spot in yeah. the sky. Is that dust in I, your sensor? I still don't know what that is. Or dust on your lens? <laughs> no. I huh. thought it's some kind of maybe... Um, Fireflies? Flies or whatever. Maybe. I don't know. Because I don't remember seeing a whole bunch of flying around. Maybe they're too little. I can't see ah. it. But after the flash took a picture, it appeared in the picture. like <laughs> where it came from. But it looks pretty cool. <laughs> it does look cool. You know, if, if I had to take a guess, it might be dust on your camera lens being... Uh, it, it, it like emphasized even more because of the flashlight shooting against it, but it's just a guess. But no, nonetheless, oh, it looks I amazing. Think, I don't think it's the dust. You don't think it's the dust? Well, whatever it is, it looks really cool. Again, you, clever use of flash, and you don't need to know, you don't need to get the setting perfectly, right? You just have to have it fire a decent amount, and you got this amazing picture. Mm -hmm. Also, the placement of the flash as also the placement of the subject. You see how I have them cross the face rather yes. than, you know, the face. Yeah. That way, it allows the flash lit more onto the female subject's face. So that, ah, you know, that yes. Way. So it, um, lighting, if you're shooting a person, the lighting and the posing of the subject is, it goes hand to hand together. Oh, yeah. You got to do both at the same time. You cannot Absolutely. just do lighting and not pose. You got to do pose and lighting. Otherwise, mm -hmm. it'll be all wrong. Yeah, yeah, yep, exactly. Okay, next one, I think I have a diagram. Nope. Again. No diagram. No, I don't. I oh. think you had the diagram. No, no diagram in this one. Sorry. Okay. So, okay, a little bit better now. You see how I, got, I get better? Yeah. It's not backlighting only yeah. anymore. Yes. I mean, there's backlighting. You can see that. I got a wind light on them. At the same time, I got a uh, fun key light now to illuminate them. Now they look. Amazing. Crystal clear. Yeah, they look, they <laughs> pop, they pop. I love this it. is actually a very difficult location to photograph because um, that merry-go-rounds keep going, mm -hmm. and you have we actually really rushing while they stop and everybody off. Yeah, we have maybe I don't know five minutes to set it up and get this shot. Yep. So um, basically, the battle is there. We test it. Yes. Yeah, we didn't move it. Yeah. And then. Someone else holding a fun light with an uh, umbrella in front just yep. to illuminate them. Yep. And just pose them, put them there, and boom, 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 five minutes, let's go. Because nice. We actually get kicked out because, hey, we got to do business here. People, next <laughs> round here, <laughs> get out. Right. But That's why it's so, it's so important to have the portable light set up and go. But this is a cool location because this merry-go-round in the background, you can see the Eiffel Tower. Yeah, I just noticed that. The Eiffel Tower is money. And then you got them lit properly, and then you get the merry-go-round too. Amazing photo. And the, the, the expression is just perfect. Well, we trained them while we're waiting yeah. for the merry-go-round to start. So no, that's enough. And I said posing-wise, it has to work. Yes. Okay. Next. Oh, there's I a think diagram. I do have, yeah, that's a diagram, see? Yeah. So I have an umbrella in front of that to get the soft light. See how soft the front light is? Yep. And then a backlight. The backlight doesn't matter. It, mm -hmm. it could be anything. Mm -hmm. So using that composition, putting them next to the merry-go-round and have the background as the Eiffel Tower. Yes. So in this case, I mean, for off-camera flash, it's pretty much double exposure. I yep. expose the camera exposed for like the Eiffel Tower and the miracle rounds. Yep. While we use the lighting to even out the exposure on the subjects. Yes. And that's how it works. Yes. Beautiful. What was your what was your shutter speed on this one? Do you remember? Was it a slow shutter Ooh. to bring in the the, the 
brightness of the Eiffel Tower, or was it bright enough that you just did a regular shutter speed? Uh, this one. Mm-hmm. It most likely be one over eighty, I say. Okay, so not, not 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 something out of the extreme. Okay, very cool. Yeah, but I think I crank up uh, the ISO a bit. Yeah. to get it. But then right. that's why both of the flash were probably very small power. Yeah, you just need a hint of light. That's all you need. Yeah. Pretty cool. And again, oh, use yeah. the umbrella. I love it. Very soft lighting on them. Mm -hmm. Yep. I, I love your I love your um your your lighting diagram. Except it looks like two guys. <laughs> they don't just... have anything for me to choose. From. <laughs> okay, that's the thing. Okay. No worries. Give me a break. I love it. I love them. Thanks for putting this together. Next slide. Oh man. Oh man. I want to move and get this time. I actually had a fun light now. <laughs> Using a fun light while I'm back light. So. Yes. This looks money, 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 money. Beautiful photo. I mean, one thing I do if you can see that I always go back to the same location. Yeah. But I will always photograph something different for a different client at a different time. I don't want to do cookie, cookie cutters. Never. I would, if I don't have to, I don't have to. I don't want to. Unless, you know, there's some clients seeing my portfolio. Like, I, I want this picture too. Like they want exactly the same thing. Right. Then I do that for them. Sure. But then I will always try to be creative and do another angle and do something else. Right, right. It, yeah, it, it lets you have more fun. It's creative again. That's why you do this because you enjoy photography. If you just do the cookie cutter shot already, you know what it looks like, you know how to set it up. It's not as exciting, it's not as fun anymore to see the results. I'll get bored myself if I keep doing that. Oh, totally. So, Without question. Yep. Okay. Uh, this one's pretty straightforward. Just mm -hmm. one, one umbrella in the front. Boom. Mm -hmm. Look in the back. Yep. Sitting there. Boom. Yep. This is actually a very difficult place to do off camera flash because, you know, for once, there's water all around. So you got to be careful and mm -hmm. where you place the subject. Uh, but at the same time, some of those really difficult locations is where the background looks really cool. Yes. So, I can uh, see that. You gotta, you Great gotta pick choice. A I, I just love like the reflection of the wa on the water and the, 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 the sort of, like lighting everywhere. Like you have lights in this area here and the lights around here it just really makes oh, yeah. the picture very interesting uh, all those lights that you have next slide yeah please mm -hmm. Ooh, another amazing photo Bro. yes beautiful my, my lighting my lighting is never really complicated like for this case it's only one light one umbrella in the front again to lit them up you can see that where the shadow land yeah right. right there light. right simple one light setup uh, I think the most important thing is you, you got to look for good location. Like yes. in this case, yeah. uh, if you ever look at any kind of travel channel that will mm -hmm. be into Rome, you know there's a lot of people you know, circling around Coliseums. Yeah. So th if you want to do this picture like way under, where yeah. next to the Coliseum, right. you will have a lot of people. Well, I mean, for my Photoshop skill, I could actually remove that, but why, right? Right. <laughs> so, we actually came up a little up here, a little little hill up there, which Great away choice. from all the people. Yes. And Cosm is still back there. Yes. Yeah. So it's, this it's is a really good better. angle. Mm -hmm. Love it. Okay. Next one. Yep. Right. Wow. This is the Hong Kong night scene. Yes. So I like this, this picture because you see how the light is kind of more greenish, cyan. Yes, and then his shirt and also his uh, I mean her uh, dress is kind of matching in color so yep. the whole color of it works mm -hmm. so um, this is kind of like a, I wouldn't say private but semi private location it's like some companies like middle <laughs> ground yeah. but it had this really nice you know back backdrop uh -huh. so we kind of we didn't stay in they actually opened so we walk in there but we, we try not to do too much damage and we get the shot done by just putting one flash in the front, uh, illuminate them, and then done. Wait, hold on. I think I have, I, for this case, I don't know if you can see it. On the whale, there's some light leaking. I might have a flash behind them and try to create a whim light, but um, oh. unsuccessful because I don't have one light stance. I don't know even know where to put that flash <laughs> behind. You know the trick is I, some... Yeah, sometimes I have the the, the groom hold the, the light, but yeah, he's case, holding it. He's he holding, was holding it. it before. He didn't hold it right, so I was like, forget it, just put uh, it in the back. And I forgot it was still on, so it's triggered, but then it didn't really lit a lot of light out. Yeah. So that, 
that little bit, so just let it go. <laughs> it's interesting. He, I, I had him put his head behind it and just like, where the heck are you aiming? <laughs> it's not even right. It's hard. It's hard for them. They don't know what where where you want the light. Okay, I think I have a diagram, but I don't think the diagram talk about the backlight in the back. There's no. A, yeah. No. You know, that's the key. Yep. So you see how that one light is basically more directly to the female? Yes, always. Wow, that the drops of shadow on the, what do you call it, Spong here? Uh, Chibong? Yep. No, Chabong. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Jabong. So it's kind of give her more definition right there. So yeah. So it's a bit confusing. And for guy, I don't, I never mind putting the guy in shadow. I think it makes the guy look more mystery and more manic. Yes, stronger. For sure, yeah, and it, it just it just works because your eye is automatically drawn to the bride or the the female, and then you have the 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 the, the, the groom or the guy in the shadow. It looks amazing. And then one other thing is most of the guys don't really like taking pictures, so they Better. might not have the fast emotion. So yeah. using the shadow behind them is it helps a lot. <laughs> Perfect. Yep. Okay, right, next one, please. Mm -hmm. Ooh, wow. Oh, one is like one of those tram. Yeah. And we walk up there. Um, you know, we can't play it too long here. <laughs> we yeah, gotta you got to be quick. For so sure. we went up there. I dropped a flash in the floor and had them stand all the way in the front and just I thought, keep kissing. Keep kissing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Take like maybe six or eight shots and then. I didn't even know I got it or not yet, but just the captain done and say, like, yeah, you guys are done. Yeah, yeah, we're, <laughs> we're gone. So, and got this picture. It's not the perfect lighting, but then, you know what? I think the whole picture composed itself. It tells the story already. Yeah. It doesn't need to be lighting. I think the non-perfectness makes it more spontaneous. It's more realistic. And also, because it's over, it actually helped because the whole scenery is actually quite crowded. Yeah. With the over lighting, it's brighter. That becomes the brightest area, and then yeah. you you look at that. Yes. So that actually helps the picture even more. Yes, it draws you to it. Otherwise, you wouldn't know what you want to look at in this picture. Yeah. Pretty What's cool. Going on? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yep. Next, please. Ooh. So, um, this is the interesting thing now. Yep. One thing that about this flash. Mm hmm. It. I charge it. That's it. Oh wait, hold on. What am I doing? <laughs> oh, it has a model light. Ooh, I didn't know it has a model light. Oh, that's really cool. So, so this act as my LED light. As yes. Well. Mm -hmm. So for that picture, if we go back to the pictures. Mm -hmm. I actually use it to um, illuminate them. Yes. And just take this. Down. So Got you it. only use the modeling light. You didn't even use the flash for this one. No, not flash. It's a morning light. Nice, very subtle. Yeah, basically we are leaving, and then I found this at a really good angle. Mm -hmm. I said, "Hey, hey, stay there," because yeah. we we actually we're riding the tram to the yeah. next station. Yep. And that that's our destination. But then while they're walking down, I said, "Hey, that's pretty cool. It's kind of like a movie scene." So <laughs> I have I have like thirty five. This is like a thirty five, and basically have my assistant on the side. Mm -hmm. You see how those tennis shoes? Like yeah. The blue shoes. Yep. That's, that's, and using the, the LED shining on. Yep. I didn't think about the guy. The guy I'm using the street light, which is you see how kind of red and yeah. orangey. Yeah. Background. I can't see your face, but then we're using the, L, the LED light in the flash, the model light. Perfect. To illuminate her face. Yes. Get this shot. It's not perfect lighting, but then again, in a movie scene, I mean, it doesn't have to be perfect. It just had the vibe. It does. It and does. That's... Looks great. Yep. Next one, please. Mm hmm. Lighting this diagram. One I, there you go. See, just one, one. Still the flash, but using the mono light rather mm. than flash. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. Next, next. Ooh, this one again. Is really nice. This one here also showcasing that using the mono light is yeah. still. So um, because if using a flash, it will mm -hmm. be too powerful. This is at nighttime, mm -hmm. and the flash is actually too powerful. So. Using an LED, just illuminate them, and mm -hmm. also actually I use two here. If you if you go to the diagram, I use mm -hmm. two. The reason of that is the wall itself they don't have. Um, so that's original how it looks like. Mm -hmm. That's uh, mm -hmm. So see 
see how I put a light on the wall to kind of shine up because the yeah. light is dark there. So yeah. I want to see more detail. So yeah. one light is on the subject mm -hmm. and then one light on the both from outside shooting yes. in. Yeah. Get that. So a lot of people have ask me how come you don't have a reflection on the window. Well, yeah. so it happened that where they said there's no window, there's no glass, it's empty. <laughs> so there's no reflections in there at all. Ah, makes a lot of sense. It looks, again, another amazing photo. I think I, I say amazing to all your photo because I love them all. They all look great to me. Great job. Okay, okay next one. Mm -hmm. Ooh, this one's a difficult one. This one is also this one actually has glass back there, right? So yeah. you gotta be careful about that. So um, the, for this, we have, I think I have two people holding two light, and mm -hmm. then uh, I have a magazine blocking. I think the diagram has a show. If you go to go next page. Yep. Yeah. See, I put the magazine. Yeah. Kind of block like on the side yes. and just shining from above to low mm -hmm. on the bright. Right. So that way, I can ex oh, I can expose for the outside to get the light scenes outside at the same time later and not get any reflections on the glass. Yeah. Yeah. So you... It would quite a couple try to get that angle right. Yeah, that's very tricky because if you, if you don't if you're not careful, that's why this is good because as at a point that you can use a flash yep. and you get a mono light to you know act as like a window light. So so the this, mono light, you, do you have to hold it or you just push on and it stays on? I just want to stay on. Okay, can you change the brightness of the mono light or just one brightness? Uh, not this one. Okay. Yeah. Cool. But you know, for a constant light, you can always adjust your camera. Yep. Get that. Yeah. Very cool. Next. Mm -hmm. Portraiture. Okay. So those are pure wedding stuff. I yep. also do some portrait style kind of photography. And mm -hmm. that's how portrait. I'm going to show you how I set up my lighting as well. So next slide, please. Mm -hmm. Wow. Wow. She looks strikingly tall. She's tall. She's a model. <laughs> wow. <laughs> love the background, so, uh, love the, the contrast between it. This is a very interesting place. You see how the it's colorful. Yeah, very but colorful. The, yeah. The reason it's colorful is I have a lot of light on this area. <laughs> you can tell. Ah. If you go to the next, I think I have a diagram or some kind of behind the scene pictures. Mm -hmm. You see how I have this huge softbox? <laughs> yeah. Then I had my uh, assistant even bring it up high. It's not that heavy. I don't know why she, he he's acting that way. <laughs> it's not that heavy. <laughs> he looks like he's in pain, poor guy. What are you making all your uh, assistant do? Oh, it's not that heavy. He's just playing. I so know. Um, go back to the picture real quick. And then you see how it's kind of um, gloomy day. So yep. I need a lot of light and load of stuff too get this stuff so sometime mm -hmm. well with something like this with 200 watt full power yeah you can achieve this with the softbox with the so oh, yeah. so that way i get a power as well as the softness i mean the softbox that they kind of take out like maybe a stop at two mm -hmm. of the light mm -hmm. so, uh, but good thing it's not like a sunny day yes so it works <laughs> um if it's a sunny day then i'm in trouble <laughs> Yeah, I really, I really like this photo. This, this one should have been our thumbnail. This one just captivates me. Like, oh. I'm drawn because she's looking towards the camera, but the colors are just amazing, and it's you just transform art out of this simple picture. Love this. Yeah, one. I'm trying to put her because her clothing is kind of clean colors. Yeah. So putting her next to this really colorful and um, busy sign is just perfect. Yeah. And this side is kind of historic too, so that's why I want to go up there. And the lighting is so so soft; it's well controlled. Well, you you kind of tell that I use a softbox this case because this is like a collaboration shoot with Sony Hong Kong at one ah. time, so they give me all the gears to use, but I nice. choose my own flash and gears. And stuff. Sweet. Okay. okay, next one, please. Yep. Next, next. Oh. So this is the same uh same photo shoot. Right. This is another historic building in um, Hong Kong. It's called Blue House. Mm. Well, pretty much, right? <laughs> yeah. Blue House. So for this picture, this is daytime. Yes. But um, I use the same softbox. Yes. And get all the way up from 
like always the, on the top on the edge, of course, yeah. not in the light pole, but mm-hmm. try to pretend that there's a light up from the light pole to shine down, see how the shadow is basically falling yeah, behind. Yeah, yeah, you can see a shadow behind them. Yeah. Very, and it's so, low, low shadow. Yeah. Uh, originally, when I do location scouting, I don't mm-hmm. know, I haven't seen that bike there. But when doing a shooting, they say, there's a bike in my shooting location. <laughs> use it. Use it to your advantage. I know. So I was like, I'm using this. <laughs> oh, man. You better be quick because I don't know who owns that bike. Might come out and say, hey, why are you touching my bike? Oh, no, no, no. They, so on the outside of the street, it's actually like a mechanic. Ah, so we asked that bike. Cool. Like, Can we take pictures of it? They say, yeah, go ahead. Nice. Because <laughs> basically, this is what I do. If there's a guy and we're shooting either, um, you know, the bride or the model, we yes. always get a t- have a hot chick to talk to the guys. Can we use, photograph this? Uh, they can't really say no. <laughs> yes. Nice. Smart. Always be a girl to talk. Say, oh, sure. But then when they thought that was the girl photographing, it was me photographing. <laughs> uh, good trick. Good tip. Yeah, the, yeah, that works Some most of the time. Most of the time. Okay, don't quote me on that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and this one you obviously have a soft box because I can see how soft the shadow the soft is. Box. The soft box. Nice. It's a huge soft box, like a 48, 48 inch soft box, I think. Yeah. Three. So the one with the, the, the kit that we have linked b- below, that one comes with a, a big soft box too, right? So not this. Yeah, this one actually. That one. Yeah. It's a small it's... one, but it still works. Okay. It still works. I mean, uh, because the light itself is powerful enough that you could actually bring it a further distance. Ah, the light yeah. still farther yeah, away. Farther away. So yeah. very you cool. Still get soft, you will still get those soft light. Nice. Slide it. Yes. But then, you know, for a big one like this, unless it's like a collaboration shoot, you yeah. have a lot of people helping you out, it's not easy to use. Yeah. So the the small one that the Kikolo comes with is actually much better. Mm-hmm. So you just have one assistant or yourself, or even yourself, you could do it yourself. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you hide, have it high, high enough, you should be good. Except you might want to weigh it down with some sandbags because uh, softbox can get blown away pretty quick, pretty easily. You may have the location. If you're shooting windy area, then yes. You probably, not even sandbag can help you if you're shooting in a windy area. Yeah, yeah, maybe three sandbags. <laughs> <laughs> but the best is to have someone hold it for sure. Cool, okay. Yep. Gonna go to the next one. Yep. You got about 15 slides left, and we got about 10 minutes. Okay. Yep. Well, we talk about it. Say, big softbox. Next. <laughs> oh, and we got a comment from... Oh, Sarah Chan says, beautiful picture. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Sarah. <laughs> it's Sarah. Yep. And next slide. Oh, wow. Okay. Again, yep. this is a blue house, but can you tell what's the difference? I went back again because I love that place so much. <laughs> yep. But they, model. we model it. No, look at the wall. It's all clean up. <laughs> oh, I didn't notice that. They yes. repaint the whole thing. I was like disappointed. <laughs> <laughs> but it's beautiful in its own way. I like it. It's very Because this, this is a clean. collaboration with yeah. one of the top um, fashion designers in Hong Kong. And yes. you know how that, that the clothing she had, you yes. know, the golden dragon, the yes. yellow dress, the gray. It was very um, oriental. Mm-hmm. And I want to bring her this really old house to, mm-hmm. you know, feature that. But it couldn't happen. That vision it didn't make up. So I've got to go with alternative, which is like that. Mm-hmm. And again, this is very easy to set up. One big softbox on top. Mm-hmm. Actually, is this softbox? No, I think it's an umbrella this time. And same one same result. Yeah. Same. And we did that before. And then it actually really bright up the whole blue and her yellow dress too mm-hmm. with the light. It just the vibrant color because the light <laughs> is there. Yes. Looks I good. I have a diagram. Do I, don't, don't I have a diagram for this? You don't, yes, yeah. but you got that. <laughs> That's better than a diagram. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Pretty obvious. Yeah. <laughs> one light. That's all it is. One I, huge I always use one light. I always use one light because you know why? It's simple. Yeah, because there's only one sun, it's more believable. Oh, yes, that's true. You should have one right, one light direction, and then the shadow is one direction. Yeah. When you have shadow all over, that, I don't know. I don't well, like it. Yeah. Some people, I just don't. One light works. Yep. It's simple, and it looks great. Yep. Move on? Okay. Move on. All right. Whoa. Whoa. So, Intense. this is more like uh, in. 
different type of followers, like more like cosplaying, um, yeah. steampunk type of cosplay. <laughs> yep. So this is pretty much like a ghetto parking lot. There's yep. nothing there. So we basically using the light to shape uh, the whole environment. So I have a, no, I have two. I have mm-hmm. two flash. Mm-hmm. Can you go to the diagram? I think I have diagram. I don't remember how I set it up. It's been a while talking oh, about yeah. this. Yep. Oh, okay. So, okay. So I'm missing one back there, but supposedly there's two flash out there. You see how ah. there's one leaking in the guy's yes. face? Yes. And, and you see how back there is also blue? Yes. So I have two, two yep. flash out mm-hmm. there mm-hmm. and using blue gel, right? Mm-hmm. And in the front, I have a soft box. Yes. And using a CTO gel to balance out. So you see how her um, skin is basically warmer? Yes. And normal tone? Yeah. So that with the orangey and blue kind of color yeah. dynamics. Yeah. And Very great color dynamics. Kind of, you know, intense look. Yes. Kind of like gaming. Cosplay type of look. So. Oh yeah, you definitely achieved that with this. Again, with very strategically placed light, good angle, great expressions. Uh, you got everything dialed in. Very interesting image, to say the very least. Yeah, this one's interesting. Mm-hmm. Okay, please. Yes. Ooh, okay, I more, love planes. <laughs> more, more, more with gel this time. Yes. You see how I use the wet gel and the blue gel because yep. of their styling. I just mm-hmm. want to give a kick. If you, if if I just using a normal flash, I mean, yeah. Well, for the yellow plane, it's fine because it's colorful. Mm-hmm. For the silver plane, I feel like yeah. hitting more color to it, it give it get it more interesting. Yes. Get a more edgy look. And yeah. It's also matching the whole purple outfit. Yep. Like, and you so, have blue gel on the, the flash too, right? Yeah, blue gel and red gel too. Oh, two, two. Okay. So on, if you look at the picture that, that the model is sitting on the yellow plane, yeah. you see how some of her hair on top is actually red. Ah, yes. And so you can see the backlight. The, both of the gel is backlight. One okay. is on the left, one on the right. I see, I And see, then yeah. there's one more flash in front yes. to illuminate. That so three lights with the soft lighting. Softer light so them, this right? is how this is when I use multiple light is if I want to create like a uh, scenes with yeah. the color in the recent that light then I will use multiple light yeah but the key light is always one light yep yeah very smooth lighting I love the drop off I, and I love the highlights that the red and blue uh, offers mm-hmm. okay I think the next one do I have a diagram for this one at all yep yeah okay. I did. see yep. again right there yep two color gels and a grid you have grid here. Yeah, I do. Yep. And anyway, why do you have a grid? What does a grid accomplish for you? Because I don't want those lights to spill onto the plane. Ah, very nice. Very cool. Next one? Yeah, please. Mm-hmm. Post-processing is your passion, is it, Jeremy? Yeah. Um, recently, I just talked to another really amazing photographer. He mm-hmm. is actually creating a whole new uh, off-camera lighting mm-hmm. group. Like he invited me to be part of it. Like, hey, I'm actually specialized in post-processing. Why me? Like, well, he said that, well, there's not much people realize that after you shoot a picture, you still have to process them. Rather, you're doing natural light or off-camera flash. So he want me to be part of it and, you know, show people that you can also, you know, a lot of people want to get it right in the camera. Yeah. Uh, get it right in camera can be more if you post-process it. Oh, yeah, right absolutely. Way. Yeah, and so, sometimes you can't get it perfect in camera. But post-processing really, really makes the picture like bounds above what it comes out of the camera looking. Yeah, because mm-hmm. one thing I, think I told you before is I'm actually a retoucher first before I'm a photographer. So yeah, I remember that. Something. Okay, so uh, don't have much time, so move on. Come yes. on, hurry up. Oh! So I basically, this, this, is a, this is like a studio shoot with a wet background yep. and just I think it's two light setup. So one one big key light in the front, mm-hmm. illuminate them, mm-hmm. and then one back light from them. That's it. Two light. Easy. Really straightforward. Yes. Easy. And then I just follow soft the crap out. <laughs> it's like <laughs> making the back wet to more like a, a mystery and painting ish kind of background. Mm-hmm. And enhance the shadows. Well, kind of deeper than the shadow and then enhance the highlight mm-hmm. to create a dynamic of the subject, the intensity of it. So I, I don't know. I really like this image for some reason. I, I like really it. Do. It's very uh, captivating. Love it. He's a class player. I think he's playing um, Slick in what's the game? Metal, Metal Gear, Gear or something? Maybe yeah, something. Yeah, like. I don't I don't remember that game, but I think it's from Metal Gear. Yeah, he was keep talking to me about the game, 
<laughs> and he thought that I played it. He was like, I never played that game. So I, I really don't know what you're talking about. I'm just going to take a picture. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, okay. Next one, please. Yep. Ooh. So, yeah, two like, lights. Uh, two yeah. lights. Two lights. Big softbox. Cool. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, do I have more? You, yeah. You got okay, this is... four more slides. Okay. So this is the same setup, but this is the second day. This is another class player. He, this guy's famous. I didn't realize that. Really? He basically traveled Asia all around to cosplay. Oh. This is his Final Fantasy. Wow. This, is, this, is, this, this looks like an anime. Like this is, I, yeah. didn't even thought, I didn't even know this was a real person. That's really real person, good. Like, yeah, because um, with all the lighting, and yeah. I retain a lot of details, yeah. which it's cool. But at the yeah. same time, I can hide the detail and show some of the detail and hide some of the detail to create a mystery dynamic that surreal. Is it like a real person or is it animated? Yeah, it's I like really play good. Around with that. This one is really, really good. And then I have him kind of holding a surface book. Yeah, <laughs> I, love, I love the subtle touch. And the, the, the silver matches the outfit very well, too. Oh yeah, it it's like can you hold my computer? <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Okay, next one. I think we. I think it's the same type of lighting. Yeah, yeah. same lighting. Just two two soft boxes. Sandwich right. sandwich lighting. Yeah, like that. it's pretty cool. I love this kind of lighting. It create a lot of dynamic with the shadow and highlight. Yep. It kind of, it shows what I want to show. It hides what I want to hide. So yeah, it's perfect. And it's very soft. Next one. Mhm. Oh. Interesting. Silent Hill. This one is interesting. Yeah. This one, um, you, you might want to show the next slide. I can able to tell more on the next, next slides. <laughs> so, the background looks hilarious. Yeah, I was, I so want to shoot this guy. It's um, Halloween costume. <laughs> but when Halloween he walk costume. in, yeah, yeah, this is his top costume. He walk in with that big knife. I was like, yeah, the sword. It. <laughs> yeah, my background won't fit all that in there. <laughs> so I just have been standing next to the really dark wall. Yeah. And I just use one light, blast mm-hmm. the hell out because this character needs to be dark. So yeah. I don't need a lot of light on yeah. Just that the highlight in the front, that's it. Yep. So if you go back to the um the finished one, please. Yep. So I just have to remove all that and yeah. create create my own background. Yep. And create this kind of dark uh, ghostly mystery type. And yeah. Boom. That does it. That's so cool that I di- I wouldn't have imagined this didn't fit in your backdrop, but you 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 made it work. It's huge sword fits the photo completely. Oh. Uh, damn it! Because I tried a couple times, like ah oh, no, it doesn't work. Because <laughs> the other side, the background, it has even more messy stuff. So yeah. I just have been standing in the wall instead, so that way it's cleaner for me to do in post. Yep. But. This costume is amazing. It is. <laughs> so, yep. Do I have more? You or... have three more slides. Okay, so I think we're done here. So we could just keep going. Yep. Yeah, that's one. Two more slides. This one and one more. Oh. Oh, we could, we could skip that. I just I do offer one-on-one follow oh, classes. Yeah. If you <laughs> if you guys still want any one-on-one sessions, uh, I believe Jeremy still will be having them again. Uh, at his website, and also you can check out the link on pixelstabbers.com. We're still working on the website. Once it's done, mm-hmm. if you want one-on-one, uh, you can get lessons from Jeremy Chan himself, right? Yep. And, and I think that that's on my Jeremy. page. And that's me. Yep. With my service. Yeah, I love that. <laughs> All right. Let's uh, let's uh, just kind of bring back um, the lighting that you use here. So. Uh, some of those pictures you took a long time ago when this type of lighting wasn't available. You probably had one of these speed lights, right? But they also accomplish the same function. But now with the GT200, you have a much more powerful light. It's just as oh, compact. Yeah, it helps a lot. I love how the battery is one piece. You don't have to worry about four batteries here. It's got uh, all the, the diffusers uh, magnetic, right? So you can pop them on really quick really easy with the dome and then the color gels you got all of these color gels included because with this flash i always have to stick a piece of tape here and stick the gel here so when i need it i can use it but yeah that's a good system right yeah. there yeah this it has is a honeycomb it has a gel kit yeah. and here has a it has also like a soft dome yes so it really helps yeah and then if you it, it 
I believe this comes with the 2.4 gigahertz wireless trigger. Oh no, the trigger doesn't include oh. in this package, but you can get that too no. if you need to. Yep. Yeah. Oh, here's some video too. I never knew they had a video. Let's check out the video real quick. Ooh. Show you how fast it's set up. Play. Okay. You just it. Gikodo. Gikodo. Oh, yeah, come with that that carrying case. Whoa. Oh, so compact. And this is just with yeah. the with the soft box too, right? Yeah, that soft box, the light stand, everything is yep. in that one case. Yep, and the light stand, and the dome, and the, the gel. And the light, yep. charger. Charger as well. So. Oh, you get a little stand. Oh, that's, a, the, that's how you mount the soft box. Yeah. And it's easy to uh, construct too. Oh, that's mm -hmm. quick. Wow, it's a good size soft box. I thought you said it was small, but it's a good size. It's a good size. Yeah. It's a good size for portrait. Mm -hmm. And it's so easy to attach the flash on too. This one screw holds it because the flash is small. And look at that. The whole unit is so light and compact. You can hold it <laughs> yep. with one hand. Gikoto. Very cool. And again, you can buy the flash uh, with the soft box here for $400. And it's a great kit. All you need there, uh, except the remote, you need to get the remote separately. And the other Which option, yes, $40 for the remote. And the other one you have is just the light by itself, but it also comes with all the components here. You can see this picture, um, the charger, as well as the color gels. You got the honeycomb grid, you got a soft dome, um, carrying case, and you got this uh, nice handstand, which is Wait, cool. You see the handle? You see the handle? Yeah. You see how there's a screw down there? Yes. That's what I'm missing. I need it back. <laughs> <laughs> yep, yep. That's the best feature there is. I'm telling you, that's the best feature. Yeah. I love this. Yeah, it, it, so it acts as a handle, but it also just puts itself right on the light stand too. So dual purpose. If there is no flash out there, I should give you a handle like this. Yeah. Like this type of flash. Yeah, I like that's it. I love this. Very cool. Very cool. Yep. You get the modeling light that you talked about here. Different groups, different channels, you got the slave mode and you have a custom mode as well. And you can change the power for manual or you can move around the menu with those buttons there. Excellent results as you would imagine with any flash lighting. You got the safety lock, you got the rechargeable battery, you got the light cover and four different color filters, 2.4 uh, gig wireless G system. E. Yep. So this is all that comes with the packet. It all comes with it. Yes, just remember the trigger doesn't, it's not included in the package. If you have questions, reach out to Gikodo. They're really good with customer service. They'll help you out, they'll answer any questions you have. So make sure you ask some questions before you purchase so that uh, you get what you expect and you're happy with it and you use it for making amazing pictures. Uh, some that will get you a, a WPPI award, right Jeremy? Maybe. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> So yeah, check out those lights. Um, I think on the bottom, we also have links to some cameras. Uh, specifically, we're just highlighting the GT4, um, XT4, what am I saying? X. Yeah, XT4, which is uh, uh, one of Fuji's uh, latest camera. It just came out. I don't know why it's not coming up here. Uh, the old one's here. I'm not sure why the XT4 doesn't come out. Maybe because it's sold out. But anyway, oh, it's so well yeah, <laughs> it, they're hard to come by, especially given the health situation and it's so popular. It's a great value, uh, very capable. Oh, here it is. It's a very capable camera. It's perfect for vloggers. It's perfect for photographers. It's got a nice flip out screen and it's got a 6.5 stops of image stabilization oh, yeah. built in into camera the camera. Set. Yeah, it's, it's like the whole kitchen sink Fujifilm puts in one camera. <laughs> if you're not a Fuji fan, uh, Canon is also releasing the R5 out soon, later on this year. But if you're a Fuji camera, the X-T4 is the way to go. We highly recommend that. And uh, if you want to save a little m money, you can always get the X-T3, which is the same sensor as the X-T4, but it doesn't have the flip-out screen as the uh, X-T4 and it doesn't have the 6.5 stops of image stabilization, but still a very, very capable camera. If you buy the X-T3, you might want to look at the used prices. <laughs> right now, the used prices is not much different than the new price. <laughs> but uh, when they actually have like real used prices, oh, you can get them for like 800 app. or... That's not 8, used, 8, man. That's renewed. Yeah, renewed. So that's why it's 
it's a little more expensive. But yeah, uh, those are the cameras we have on the bottom. We got some lenses on the bottom too. You can look at those. Uh, some of those are recommended lenses. And you can just buy what you like. Um, and the last thing we want, yeah. And the last thing we wanted to um, mention is Skylum. So one of the tools that Jeremy uses to help make his pictures into art with his post processing is using a software called Skylum in addition to Photoshop. But Skylum can be used by itself as well. I don't know why it turned white. And Skylum is also in the link right below if you're interested in checking it out. Basically, it's a tool that really leverages AI technology to make photo editing really easy and elevate your photo editing to the next level. And I think my internet is, oh, there it is. Yeah, so you can see in this demonstration here, it can put objects into your photos. It's smart because it has AI and it can go through and pick out what is a structure and puts your object right behind it. So what AI does is it can let you select the sky and change it with the click of a button without having you spend time to mask. Same thing with like facial features like the, the eyes, the nose, the lips. It will detect what the facial features are so you can just move sliders. You don't have to waste, waste time cropping or masking them out. And there's a bunch of other options you can do, um, tons of features. There's AI enhancement, AI structure, AI lighting, uh, AI skies, lots of features. You can remove objects in seconds. So a great tool, whether it's a standalone, you can use it right out of the box. You don't need Photoshop or Lightroom or anything like that. Or you can use it as a plugin to Lightroom and Photoshop. It and is definitely it's, like good um, Photoshop and Lightroom alternative. Yes, yeah, yeah. You can use it, it with- It does more too. Yeah, it does a lot more. I, I would say, in a nutshell, it's, um, it has the simplicity of Lightroom, but the, the feature pack and the ability to control pixels like Photoshop. So it's a really good yeah. mix. And if you look, you can see where are the bastards here for Skylum. Oh. And I heard you say, where's the bastards there? <laughs> <laughs> no, ambassadors. But you, you can listen to that however you want. But I said ambassadors. And this is what Jeremy uh, says about it. So, hey, that's me. Yeah. So emotion is a major factor when it comes to creating storytelling images. With the help of Luminar's AI technologies, photographers can now fully focus on the emotional and storytelling part rather than worrying about the technical part of mm -hmm. how to in their creative process. So, very well said. It's a great tool, <laughs> under $100, link down below, and it can transform your photos to a next level. If you want to see more details on that, check out our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash pixelstabbers, where we break down some uh, FAQs, frequently asked questions about Luminar 4, as well as some basic, tu basic tutorials and advanced tutorials, and just, explore the tool and you can see it has so much packed into it for under 100 bucks we highly recommend it we use it in our professional workflow day in and day out totally recommend it yes take so stepper it's just like the logo we see it right here yeah oh the logo that, that's no longer there because we're wrapping <laughs> up and i just want to give you the line if you have anything to say jeremy to wrap up the day um well for this we're just talking about flash but you got to combine every single thing from flash post processing to posting, people production, everything together to create your amazing vision. So um, I think in the short near future, me and David will create more of this kind of video Absolutely. and show you how we create all that in different genres of from posing to mm -hmm. composition, um, post processing to lighting. So basically once we could get out of the house, we'll even do more. <laughs> <laughs> and, and <laughs> it sounds point, like we're not going to be able to do that for a while, Jeremy, but even while we're locked in quarantine or self-quarantine, shelter in place, we're still going to take uh, our time to make amazing pictures, oh, sorry, amazing videos to teach you guys, to share our knowledge. We want to mm -hmm. share and build a community of photographers and we want to welcome everyone from a new photographer to a hobbyist photographer to a professional photographer because we all have so much to share and learn from each other. And that's what we are at pixelstabbers.com and our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash pixelstabbers. So check us out, like our videos, let us know in the comments if you want to see more of certain videos and we'll do our best to accommodate. Will.
All right, and so we want to thank you all for tuning in. We hope this video was helpful in learning about Jeremy's uh, photo style, some tricks about how he sets up his lighting, and to give you a perspective of which light to get and what softbox to use, as well as some cameras down in the link below. And let us know if you have any questions, and thank you again for watching. We're going to sign out now, so have a great night, and thank you again for checking out our channel. So we're going to sign out in okay. three, oh. two, one, and we are out. Well, we're out of Amazon, but we're still on YouTube, so we gotta <laughs> sign out here too. So let's sign out in three, two, one, and we Bye -bye. are.